Hello everyone and welcome back to Crowley House Flower Farm. This week, Brayden and I finally got around to processing some of our elderberry flowers or they're flowering right now. So we like to infuse um, our elderflower with a couple different alcohols, one being um, some vodka and the other one, I've never done this before, but this time we used, um, what is it called? Everclear. Ugh. But mainly for medicinal reasons, I guess it's really good when you have a cold, uh, that kind of thing. You also like water it down, you add it to something, but it draw. what I understand is it draws the goodness out of the elderflower and better than like a regular, like you could use gin or you could use vodka, that kind of thing. So the other thing we did was just make a elderflower cordial that turned out absolutely fabulous. We put a little bit of lemon in it um, and just boiled it with a tiny bit of, we used honey instead of sugar uh, because we have a lot of honey here on the farm. And I tell you, man, it made, if you, if you make it for anything, make it just for the smell. I mean, it made the kitchen smell like summertime goodness. I mean, there is nothing better. This is the end of July for us here on the farm. And you can see we've got lots and lots and lots and lots of elderberry or elderflowers still going. I mean, I'm thinking that I'm gonna make one more recipe for um, just putting up of the cordial because it was just delicious and I'd love to have a little bit more. But normally this time of year, we're actually harvesting berries. So we've just had a very um, cool summer, very wet spring, um, wet summer so far. It's, um, this week we're having a heat wave. It's 100 degrees right now. So <laughs> it just switched just like that and it can do that. But um, you can see that the berries are just still in like green form. They're not even blued up or anything. So, which is kind of cool because I'm leaving for a couple weeks. Um, so I'm going to go over to Europe with my son, Brayden. Uh, just, it's kind of one of his little gifts. He's, uh, just graduated from high school. He did really, really well, despite all of his, uh, medical issues and that kind of thing. He graduated with honors and things, and that's one of the things he wanted to do. So we've been planning this for a couple years. And so I'm going to head over there with him and tootle around. I'm actually going to go, um, early with my sister, Mary, and, um, we are going to just um, go to Sweden see a friend of hers and then we're gonna head over to Norway and see my cousins a lot of my friends um, some folks that we know from church over there and I think it's gonna be a wonderful time but anyways this was just Brayden and I making our cordial and our liqueurs and um, yeah just kind of something we do every year on the farm Coming to help? I've got eight flowers. We need 20. Okay. Thank you. And you gotta watch, you gotta watch for like
What? Today we're making elderflower cordial. So um, we're kind of late on getting to the elderflowers. They're still blooming. Normally they're done this time of year and we're actually starting to pick the berries themselves. But we thought we would just seize the moment and get it done. So mm -hmm. we're gonna head in and get our, we need a little bit of alcohol, some lemon zest, and about 20 to 25 heads of cleaned elderflowers, which we already cut ours. It was super quick and fast. We're gonna clean them up. We're gonna take them off the stem. Some of them are starting to like, look at that. It's like wow, fading. So head in with us. We're gonna go make that. Bye. Super easy. Okay, so we're starting to make our elderflower cordial. Cordial. That sounds so fancy. Mm -hmm. So we're starting to make our cordial and what we're going to do is today I'm going to use um, a little bit of vodka. So I just got something fairly inexpensive at the store. Each one of these mason jars is going to hold about oh, 20 or so of the flower heads, 20-ish flower heads. And then we're going to add four cups of vodka and then we're just, it's really simple actually, we're just going to add a few slices of lemon zest that we just peeled in the kitchen. Another way you can do it is also make like a gin, and I really like gin. So um, this is another way you could just add gin to it. You want to let it sit in the cupboard for about two weeks in a dark, cool place. And then you're going to strain the elderflower out, and it'll be lovely. 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 So the way, um, oh, and then the other one I have here, <laughs> This is um, not good on its own, but this is Everclear. So Everclear you can use more of like a medicinal, like if you had a really bad cold or you weren't feeling well, um, you could do, I find that it draws the elderflower out a little bit more, that taste, and also because it's a higher alcohol, the benefits of the elderflower. So sometimes I'll make a small amount of this because it is so strong. You definitely want to, if you're having it for a cold or something um, like that, that you're, you know, sore throat, that kind of thing, um, you would probably want to just add a little bit of water to it because literally nasty stuff. But it does kill <laughs> a lot of germs. What? I'm just, you know, watching you. Oh. Like, we don't want it completely full. You're supposed to push, put about 20 heads of flour in. I wasn't counting, but... There's 25 in there, so you just want to make sure there's five left. Oh. I thought you were doing that jar, too. Um, oh, we can. What was that jar for? Well, I just got a second one if we wanted to do it. Shy! Okay, well, we don't have enough to do a second jar. If you were right, doing I can go cut jar. some more while you're doing that. Got it, okay, so like, then we'll just do this one. Okay. Sweet. Sounds good. So I'm going to take this first one and fill it up with our vodka and I don't know if you've ever smelled elderflower. It's really kind of, what do you think it smells like? I don't know. Watermelon. A little bit like watermelon, like a melon, like really fresh, a little bit sweet like honey. You smell that? Yeah, honey? I do smell honey. You do smell honey. Anyways. You can actually add a little bit of sugar to this when it's done and make like an elder, like flower syrup. There's all kinds of things you can do. Our elder flower cordial is generally non-alcoholic, which we will make some of that. Our crop of elderberries is out of this world this year. And I think it's because of all the rain. So there are these benefits of having all this rain. The apples are looking great so far. The cherries didn't do good for us, but the elderflower, the um, pears are amazing. We're going to have a plethora of things. So a mason jar is about four cups and that's what this recipe calls for. So I'm just going to top it off and make sure the alcohol covers all of the little flowers. We're going to tuck it 
into our wine cellar. Can I tuck it in with your wine? Yeah, we should. We need to build a cellar first, you know. And our wine cellar is under the stairs. So we did wash all of the elderflower, um, <laughs> just to make sure. We do live on a gravel road, so we do get a little bit of dust coming through, and that's kind of up closer to the road. So um, we felt like uh, we should probably wash them. They weren't that dusty, but um, and we kind of picked to the back side where the dust doesn't come so much. But we're excited, and it's good to spend time with Brayden. Yeah. Isn't this fun, Brayden? It's fun. So Brayden and I just finished up the elderflower cordial. So what we're doing is we just did the same amount of elderflower heads. It's really important that you don't get all the stemmage, the green part. That all is not very good for you. It's actually kind of poisonous and that's all true with a lot of medicinal plants. So you have to be a little careful and do your homework, read about it, that kind of thing. So. Um, we went ahead and added four cups of water to our 20 heads of elderflowers and then we sliced one lemon and we're bringing it to a boil and then we're going to go ahead and let it sit overnight. Tomorrow we'll add a little bit of sugar to it. Um, you could add like, um, so we use the kind of like the raw sugar, but you could also use like maple sugar, whatever sugar you would like. Uh, we tend to like to, the more natural sugars so um, that's what we're going to do tomorrow and then you bring it back to a boil and it makes like a syrupy kind of drink that you could add like a seltzer to. It's kind of refreshing. Uh, anyways that's what we're doing and so those are the three different elderflower cocktail beverage things that we're making this year. We tend to make them every single year. They're super yummy to have on the shelf. Like I said, a lot of times we grab the Everclear for, you know, when you have a cold or sore throat, we'll grab some of that. Um, it's really strong, so it's not very fun to taste, um, but it does work well. Um, later, when the elderberries are going, I will make obviously some of the elderberry syrup for like pancakes, the kids like that, and um, we'll make some more elderberry, um, what is it called? You know, for colds and coughs, I will make that elderberry cough syrup, whatever they call it. Anyways, so. I love having these bushes. They are prolific this time of year. And so we're putting them to use here on the farm and stocking our pantry. Yeah. Okay, that's it. That's all I know about elderflower. I know no more.
I hope you enjoyed this video and thank you so much for tagging along with us here at Crowley House. We sure do appreciate it. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you next week in another fantastic video from the garden. Much success in all you do and grow and we will be seeing you shortly. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.